this surgical video demonstrates some of the normal aqueous vein anatomy, which uh, will be very important for targeted microstent implantation within the canal. This is a right eye of a patient, so we're looking at this point supranasally identifying uh, the presence of this aqueous vein. This is a clear-filled vessel present coming off the limbus that joins uh, a blood-filled um, episcleral vein, uh, indicating that these are uh, important uh, aqueous carrying veins. Uh, here we look more nasally uh, and more infranasally here, identified, identifying here more of a tangential vein that you see is tracks toward the limbus and then actually is found to be um, near the uh, outer wall of the canal as we, as we point here, indicating this is likely more of a direct aqueous vein coming right off of the canal. These aqueous veins come either from, uh, from a plexus of vessels near the, near the uh, canal or directly off the canal. That's identification of these major aqueous veins, which are very important to place microstents in the vicinity of these aqueous veins, particularly the ones that come off the canal itself. We'll now increase the pressure in the eye to push aqueous through the uh, Sums Canal uh, collector channel aqueous veins, and here we see further blanching of that uh, vein that we saw earlier. This is more in the infranasal quadrant of the right eye of this patient, showing further uh, blanching of that vessel after uh, we have increased the pressure in the eye. We follow it through here again in a tangential fashion, then it dives down and hooks down into the canal region near the limbus. And this would be a position again that we would like to identify to, to selectively target and place, for example, a microstent in this vicinity. You see some box car and laminar flow amongst some of the conjunctival vessels that are also present in this area. Going back infro nasally here, uh, we see again some laminar flow present here. And nasally here, we see a nice, uh, fairly large caliber aqueous vein with some laminar flow. This seems to come directly um, off of the canal. This is more of a radial uh, pattern here as it goes posteriorly. And then just next to the supranasal, we see uh, another vein here that's uh, connected uh, to the canal. We'll now drop the pressure here and look with gonioscopically to see if we can correlate some of the uh, aqueous vein uh, positions in the canal. And we see some focal blood reflux, particularly there infranasally. We actually see blood reflux into the anterior chamber. We've not made any incision into the meshwork here, but we can see blood reflux into the anterior chamber in the area focally, particularly infranasal, indicating that area that we identified earlier is likely the presence of a fairly significant aqueous vein. We see some focal areas nasally and uh, supranasally as well. So let's mark the positions where we feel the uh, these major veins um, are present. There's typically uh, two or three easily identified uh, along the limbal area. Uh, more often inf inferiorly and, uh, and nasally present here. We'll identify this area here, a couple uh, little areas there for nasally, an area nasally and then an area supranasally where we identify these aqueous veins to be present as they connect to uh, from the outer wall of the canal. Just inject a bit more BSS here to see some further blanching here. And you can see in the areas that we place these marks, you can see uh, some of the blanching of these, some of these smaller epithelial vessels uh, in the plexus, in forming a plexus in this region here, and other areas where we see in this case a direct aqueous vein uh, coming right off of the canal, in this case likely present infranasally. Drop the pressure a little bit more here to see some blood filling uh, reflux back into those uh, veins. Uh, looking further infranasally, we see another vein uh, coursing off inferiorly. Uh, some conjunctival vessels are present, and here we see again that same nasal vessel we saw earlier with some nice laminar flow present coming right off. Uh, the nasal, can nasal canal um, here present with that uh, ink bark. Again, further areas looking in for nasally. Definitely something something happening here with uh, a significant amount of uh, blanching of these and laminar flow of these epischleral and cognitival vessels here. We identified that aqueous vein coming off radially and we see something coming off again more uh, radially again here as well uh, with the previous tangential alignment uh, of, the, uh, of the vein. And now finally, we're going to viewing uh, the angle, seeing focal areas of blood reflux in the areas where the ink marks were made, indicating that where we thought the aqueous veins were present, um, likely again present with that focal area of blood reflux. And this is really the positions where we wish to place these microstents, again, nasally and then supranasally, we see again, the uh, focal reflux along the areas of the ink marks. And if we are placing microstents, it's these positions, in this case, this side, particularly infranasally, that would likely benefit the most in terms of targeted placement.